Many thanks for being with us on The Breakfast this morning. It's time for us to look at our second conversation. And this morning, we're talking about stroke. Well, tomorrow will be a World Stroke Day, but it's the eve of World Stroke Day. And let's talk about it. World Stroke is observed to underscore the serious nature and high rates of stroke. Uh, increasing awareness of the prevention and treatment of the condition. The annual event was started in 2006 by the World Stroke Organization and it also declared stroke a public health emergency in 2010. The WSO now has an ongoing campaign that serves uh, you know, an annual round interference for advocacy policy outreach to support strides and continue to progress uh, make progress on the World Day uh, talking about stroke now. Choma Ezifer, who is a physiotherapist and health advocate, she joins the conversation. She's also the director of Expat Physiotherapy Services right here in Nigeria. Thank you, Choma, for joining us. Hello, it's a pleasure to be here. All right, then uh, let's get straight to it. Well, what exactly is stroke? This is something that we hear every other time. But can you quickly tell us what yes. stroke is? Um, in plain terms, uh, stroke is a serious um, health condition where that is caused by a reduced a reduction or an impediment to the blood supply of the part of the brain. Now, usually, um, when that happens, it means the brain cells in that area begin to die off. And this means that the areas of the body where those parts of the brain control are going to lose their function. I would also like to like, you know, usually like here in Africa, we define stroke as when someone is weak on one side of the body. That is hemiparesis or hemiplegia, and it's different from stroke because that is just one of the many possible symptoms of stroke. Okay, uh, uh, so, so, so yeah. what are the causes of, of stroke and uh, also the risk factors? Um, uh, there are so many things out there. Mm. Some of them are information that, you know, it's just uh, not, not official, it's just a belief, mm. widely held belief <laughs> that we've come to. So, so what are the causes of mm. stroke and also tell us about the risk factors? Number one, stroke is not a, a poison that they match. Let me start with that, so like disabuse of mind. Typically, um, in medical classification, there are two main causes, let's put it that way, two main types of stroke, rather, and there is the ischemic type that is caused where the blood supply to that part of the brain is reduced due to a blockage. It may be due to um, um, plaques forming in the arteries that supply the brain. So you can imagine your water pipe, if you have stones, lots of stones that just combine in one area, it's going to block the water supply to, where, to your garden. So imagine it in that term. And then you have the, the hemorrhagic type of stroke. This is caused when a blood vessel bursts. When it bursts to the blood vessel, so the water pipe supplying your garden just bursts. So it means the water is not even going to get to where it's going to. And typically, hemorrhagic strokes, most of the times, are caused by um, uh, in high blood pressure, in people with high blood pressure. And um, I would say that one of the most common causes for stroke is poorly managed or unmanaged high blood pressure. Now, there are lots of risk factors that can predispose you to it. Um, obesity is one of it, smoking is one of it, and very importantly, heredity. A family history of it. I always like to explain this in if you inherited a leg just like your father's, you inherited your mother's nose, so there's every likelihood you inherited your internal organs and environment just like your father's. So you're more prone, you're also likely to be prone to those um, conditions or those diseases that he is prone to. So typically we always advise if there's a family history of um, high blood pressure, and um, like diabetes, high blood pressure, these are the two most common metabolic disorders among blacks anyway, you have to like always get yourself checked. And if, it's, if, your high, if your blood pressure is high, for example, you go to your doctor and get it managed. It's so simple to manage it. It's not like rocket science, like our people make it to be. And it's not a bad thing. You can live a very quality life and excellent quality life as long as it's managed. So um, other risk factors would also, um, in some cases, 
um, some traumatic exp um, um, events could give you stroke-like symptoms, like someone that suffered a blow to the head, and it could affect the blood supply to that part of the uh, to a part of the brain, and then you have symptoms showing off. Um, I also want to there is. Stroke has a younger brother. I usually like to call it a younger brother. It's called transient ischemic attack. Now, this is where you have symptoms of stroke that occur but does not last beyond 24 hours. So, yes, this person looks like he had a stroke. All the typical, yeah, the fast acronym everybody talks about, oh, face drooping, arm weakness, um, um, slurred speech or impaired speech. Occur and suddenly disappears within 24 hours. That's what we call a transient ischemic attack. It strokes younger brother. But I usually like to warn people that it is like John the Baptist before the coming of Jesus Christ. You know, it comes to for one you or the incoming bigger brother. And so in fact, that happening alone already tells you like you're quite quite more prone to a stroke than someone that has not even had a TIA. No All right. Uh, um, so um, uh, yeah, please go. Sorry. Okay, okay. Um, other risk factors could also include um, people that have arrhythmia, high cholesterol, um, I've talked about high blood pressure, I also mentioned diabetes. So these are common risk factors. So among us blacks, diabetes, hypertension, um, hyperlipidemia or high cholesterol levels um, can produce and arrhythmias. Arrhythmias just mean irregular heartbeats. Um, you might be able to figure out that irregular heartbeats, it could in one way or the other affects circulation and thereby, you know, from the description I gave, blood supply to a part of the brain being cut off. So you might be able to figure out how that goes. So these are the um, more commonly known risk factors right. right. uh, in shock. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, yeah. um, it's, yeah. a lot, it's a lot to, to chew on. I heard you say, so that the, the TIA you talked about, um, uh, you said it's, 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 it, it can go on notice. Is that what you say? Or does it come accompanied with any stiffness or yeah, slurred true. speech, impairment in yeah, cognitive ability in speech and movement and all that? Now, there are main symptoms, at least I, I'm sure by now everyone is familiar with the FAST acronym, F-A-S-T, F standing for facial weakness, one part of the face being weak, um, A standing for arm weakness, and in other cases, weakness of any of the limbs, maybe the leg, the arm, S for slurred speech or impeded speech. And then C just means it's time to make a call, that's an emergency call. So these are the main symptoms. But I would like to um, put it, let people know that there are times the stroke has occurred. I personally had a patient, and it's confirmed I had a stroke, but physically, we're not like much physically, physically observable symptoms, but it affected his his speech. So sometimes if you are there waiting to see if the arm will droop or the face will droop, you know, you just might miss that. But these are the common symptoms that everyone can work with. So, but let's talk, uh, let's yes. uh, have further conversation. Do you think there's any connection with hypertension and stroke? Because, uh, you know, sometimes no. there's, there's always... Of course. Very, very much. And like I said, hypertension is one of the major metabolic disorders that we Africans suffer from. And so it looks like it's quite uh, more common with Africa. In fact, Nigeria has a quite um, high prevalence um, okay, of stroke. But back to hypertension, yes, hypertension is a major, major, major risk factor, like I had mentioned. Because um, due to the high blood pressure, and uh, one of the arteries supplying the brain, which I must also add, are quite slimmer, that the arteries supplying the brain are quite usually slimmer than that supplying other body parts. And they're more prone to, of course, since they're more slimmer, they're more delicate, so they can easily burst. So especially in the hemorrhagic type of stroke, it is a major, major factor. Yeah, so hypertension is, oh, it's one of the major things up there. In fact, I would say that a great percentage of um, cases of stroke patients I've had have mostly been hypertensive um, individuals. All right. Like, like they say, Chioma is a um, prevention yeah. is better than cure. Um, what, what do we need to do? What lifestyle choices do we need to make 
in order to to at least post, uh, to, to prevent such from happening because from what i hear you you medical practitioners say the age of uh, this stroke thing is not no longer you know for the old people you even seeing children having stroke someone told me they even babies are having stroke i don't know if that's true so what do we need to do uh, what lifestyle choices do we need to make health choices to to make sure we protect ourselves because i i don't yeah. have a stroke <laughs> Uh, no, you won't have. You know me. If you have, I would um, even maybe get to beat you for having a stroke. You shouldn't. I mean, you know doctors. <laughs> so, um, one of your first things you want to do is to manage your risk. Now, we mentioned the risk factors. I always like to keep it simple. Manage your risk. If you know you have a family history of these risk factors, atherosclerosis, high blood pressure, diabetes, hyperlipidemia, you know, you get to manage them and you're not managing them by drinking sand and some concoctions you see your professional if you're diabetic you want to see of course all of them you're supposed to see your doctor if you're diabetic for example you want to see your endocrinologist if you're hypertensive you want to see your neurologist you ha you should see your doctor who would prescribe the right medications for you now what these medications do like in the, in the instance of high blood pressure is to help to regulate your blood pressure. And I must also add, help to protect your kidneys, because this, um, most of these conditions also get to affect the kidneys, but that's, by the way, not related. Now, you want to manage your stroke. If you are obese, you want to lose weight as much as possible and as you can. You want to see your dietitian who will prescribe uh, proper meals for you. You want to see your physiotherapist who is going to pre um, prescribe the right kind of exercises for you. You want to, you want to um, live healthier. You want to sleep better. You just basically, your main prevention is managing your risk. All right, thank you. Um, As uh, the risk factor, yes. Thank you so much, Choma Ezife, for being with us this morning and uh, helping us understand what stroke is and how we can prevent it and what actually costs it. Uh, we really appreciate your thoughts this morning on the issue. You're welcome. All right, then. Choma Ezefe is a phys physiotherapist and health advocate. Uh, she's also director of expert physiotherapy services right here in Nigeria. Uh, it's, that's it's, the it's, size a, of it. it's, it's a big issue, yes, you is. know, um, for Africans uh, and for I lost Nigerians. my grandmother to stroke. Oh, right. I yeah. lost two parents to stroke, <laughs> you know. So when I, I took care of my father, you know, particularly because he lived with me for uh, in his last days, and uh, I saw everything, almost everything about this disease. I think the, 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 the bottom line she said is, you live right. Like for me, um, I've made a health choice. I don't take fizzy drinks again. So all of you who drink all these uh, carbonated drinks, I wish you well, <laughs> just so that um, I, can, I can be healthy. Yeah. You know, and, uh, Very important. Taking, I'm taking more fibers in my... Your in, system. Yes, yes. In my in my meals, I take and that, more fibers. And that's a very I don't great I don't choice. eat noodles again. I don't eat uh, spaghetti again. Mm. I'm praying to God for the grace to stop eating rice, and uh, I think I've stopped eating eba. You know, so let's see how it goes. Merci. Great one there, great choice right there. And that's what it's about. Uh, mm -hmm. We hope that we continue to stay healthy and, you know, continue to stay alive. Stop drinking As... carbonated drinks. That's what I'm well, saying. Well, you, you can't tell everyone that because people will you still always drink you know carbonated drinks. You don't inside. Drink uh, a lot of water. Well, Kofi, we need to move now. Yes, that's please. the size of our conversation this morning on... Uh, uh, the breakfast. It's been an exciting Friday morning. We will return on Monday, all things being equal. Thank you so much for being with us. We appreciate you so much. And if you're just joining, it's fine to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to be part of the conversation we've had uh, with Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. My name is Messi Bopo. We'll join the newsroom at 9 o'clock for the news brief. Please stay with us. And uh, my name is Kofi Bartels. Uh, I'll go, I'll still try to convince <laughs> Messi to let go of her, her, her minerals and soft drinks. <laughs> See you on Monday. Good morning.